Hey, um, so my name is Grace. I decided to make a podcast um, because I love watching them and I find them really enjoyable and relaxing and I like to have them on in the background um, when I'm knitting or doing whatever. Um, so I thought that I would try it out, see how I like it. Um, and I felt like it'll keep going. Um, I apologize for being set up in the kitchen area right now. I can't seem to find a good spot to put my phone and record. Um, and this is just kind of a trial thing right now. But anyway, um, so we're in my kitchen. Um, hopefully it'll be in a different spot. Better light, better background. So I apologize for that. Um, yeah, I... A little bit about myself. Um, I graduated from Michigan State University in 2002 with a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. Um, I am not yet using it. Um, I pretty much need to go to grad school with that kind of undergrad degree to be able to use it in um, the field that I want to work in. Um, so it's been a few years. I've been, you know, working part time. Um, my husband's an x-ray tech at a couple of hospitals. Um, so I'm just taking my time figuring out what what I really want to do and in the meanwhile I've been doing a lot of knitting so let's get into it this shawl has a bit of a background story to it but I will start off by showing it um, let's see if you can see and it's it's pretty long this shawl is my Party party on My Needles by Hoagie Locatelli. I believe I'm saying that right. I'm, I apologize if I'm not. Um, so it's going to go like this when it's done. Um, and this is actually out of some hand spun that I did. I'll show you what I've got left. It's kind of... Sorry, the lighting is just pretty blown out. Um, it is red, and right now it's starting to go into this, like, navy blue. Um, and then it'll turn into a, a dark purple. Can't really get that lighting right. That's pretty, I guess it's kind of accurate. Um, and I am doing the larger size, so it is taking quite... A while so this is out of some hand spun and then this kind of gray I believe this is dust bowl um, by Madeline Tosh in the I can't remember dandelion it's 10% linen 90% I believe superwash merino it's a fingering weight and that's pretty much how my how my um, hand spun came out this was my first big hand spun project where I really cared about um, the final result. Um, so what I did was I took a picture in um, in Chicago of a concert that I went to um, to see Jake Bug. And I, I love Instagram and I stalk Instagram constantly and there was this one lady that I was following, um, Nicole from Frost Yarns, and I just loved the stuff that she was creating. She creates bats. She also does hand spun yarns for people. Um, and I, I messaged her on Instagram and I asked, um, you know, if I sent this photo to you, do you think you could make me um, a custom bat? And, and she said, yeah, um, send it my way. Um, you know, how much do you want? Do you want it to be self-striping? Do you want it to be more variegated? And I just told her, um, pretty much take, take it, you know, I want you to put your artistic licensing on it because I love what you do. I love how you do it. Um, I, I don't really spin it any particular way. I just kind of tear off strips from the bat, um, and spin it like that. I just want, I want your, this is your inspiration and I want you to do it. Um, and yes, I do want sparkles. Yes, I wanted sparkle. Sorry, you might hear my miniature dachshunds um, running around. Um, 
So she did that for me. She's out of California. I believe her drum carter is on loan to um, Morkalicious Fibers at the moment. She is moving from an apartment to a house, I believe, in California. So I don't know if she's taking any orders right now, but I'm pretty sure she will in the future because she is fantastic. I can't say enough good things about her. She got the bat out really quick. I was just blown away by the quality and um, the interpretation that she took on it and it's just been such a joy from start to finish from spinning to, to knitting so there's there's that and um, I'll try to insert the picture if I can figure it out but but yeah this pattern so I, I went from I, I never really had in mind um, what I would be knitting with this yarn I knew it was gonna be a shawl but I didn't know what weight I didn't know um, you know even the shape of it I just kind of went with it and what had happened was I was plant as I was spinning it I thought I was gonna do a two ply with this yarn um, and and I went to my local yarn shop and I had it actually in my bag luckily and I went there for I don't know what something unrelated and I ended they had gotten a new shipment of Madeline Tosh dandelion in and I helped tag some of it because it's just fun to play with yarn um, and I kind of fell in love with one of these colors the dust bowl and I put it up next to my hand spawn and I just I was like I they have to go together because um, they're just I mean it's so you know, it's kind of like a neutral, but it's also very, very, um, I don't know, it still just pops and it's almost a little bit rustic looking with the linen, kind of like my hand spun. So I thought that it would just go really well together. And then once I had those two colors, I went, okay, clearly I want a two color shawl now. And I decided to keep my hand spun as a single rather than a two ply, which worked out really well because I got more yardage. Um, you could see the individual colors better because there's a lot of color going on with this. So if I had done a two-ply, I think it would have kind of muddled it and it just wouldn't have that impact. And you, you wouldn't be able to see the individual colors really, which is partially what I love about this. I love color. Um, so yeah, I mean the pattern is great. I, I'm pretty sure it's a newer one of her patterns. This is the first time I've ever knit. A hoagie locatelli and I'm addicted and I will for sure be knitting more of hers it's it's fantastic it's got you know just the eyelets just a just a little bit of something something going on it starts with garter um, and then you go to it's still like a garter but every every like I don't know eight rows ten rows you do this little um, increase with yarn overs and then some some decreases and it's just it's enough to keep my attention and it's it's not too busy for the yarn but it's not you know just too simple so it's been it's been pretty fabulous um i guess i didn't show you guys the picture of what it will end up but of course it's not going to look exactly like that um because this is not hand spawn it's more of a um, consistent kind of yarn I guess I would say I'm not sure what in the photo what it was knit at but you can find it um, on Ravelry um, so yeah so that's my favorite project that's going on it's um, my most current project and I just want to show you the bag that it was in um, this is my favorite project bag for the longest time I didn't have any project bags and this was my first one that I decided to treat myself to. And this is by Jenna Rose Handmade. She actually makes her own fabrics. This is um, screen printed on and this was one of her own designs. And so I had to get it. How cool is that? It's super authentic. Um, it's, it was a good price. I think she's out of Canada. So... There was, I think there was a strike going on for a while. I'm pretty sure that's over now, but um, yeah. So I just love it. I love the zipper. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like a bigger kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I love it. It's 
needles do poke out of it a little bit um, so if you use really sharp maybe sock knitting maybe not so good for that but shawls with needle protectors are totally fine in it um, my shawls getting a little too big for it so I, I kind of have to cram it in here now but other than that I just I freaking love this bag like I mean the seams I think this is I want to say homestead I'm not I'm not positive and it's just got like little deer like a little apple tree it's just so I just love it and I love it so much that I ended up getting another bag from her that I thought would be a good sock bag but it's totally not um, but it's a great notions bag and it's like a rainy a rainy cloud and it's it's her smaller size same kind of cool zipper um, and I've just got you know Stuff that I need in here so yeah that's really fun um she I feel like she doesn't update a whole lot she kind of goes I think as things run out but she's I check her out Jenna Rose handmade my next project this is a bag by Molly Klein designs it's adventure time love 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 her bags here's the inside lining so cute clearly i love adventure time i know it's showing up backwards but this is an adventure time shirt it's one of my favorite shows um and in this one since i'm working on such a big project with that shawl it's nice to have smaller faster projects and i started a mitten for somebody that i work with and she has really small hands <laughs> Um, sorry about that. That's Lola. Shh. Um, and this is actually a large child size, and I, I'm gonna have to, it's gonna have to be bigger than that. I mean, but her hands are tiny. Um, but it's been really fun because it's, you know, it's worsted weight yarn really quick. This is actually some shepherd's wool. Um, it's a Michigan-based um, fiber company. I love their yarn. It is a non-superwash merino, I believe. Um, and this is, I think, Christmas red is the colorway. Um, and they actually, in the last Winter Olympics, you um, the their sweaters that were made that said like USA and had like stars, that was made out of this yarn. So that's something really cool. Um, they're a great company. I'd check them out. So those are those are those mittens. It's just a fun little side project. Um, before I finished spinning for my party on my needles, I was working on another shawl with some of my hand spun, some with, I can't remember, it's been a while, I haven't worked on it in a while, but I think the shawl pattern is called Frise, and I, this was my first functional, <laughs> not art yarn hand spun and this was um, Frab Frabju fibers um, their kitchen sink bat so it's just kind of a mix of all different types and it comes I think in a 3.5 ounce bag and, and to me and these aren't normally my colors but it looked really fun to spin and, it, and I kind of like dubbed it unicorn poop I think or unicorn hair um, and it was fun to spin and that's this it was this spinning project that I figured out how much I like mixed fibers um, and then I got to go with it to kind of get more yardage out of it I got kind of a rustic I, I think this is a fingering weight um, I apologize I don't remember the name of the company or the brand but I will it's a two ply so it matches my two ply um, and just an orange so those go you know the, it's interesting it's interesting um, and it's my and I'm sorry it's tangled it's a frise shawl I think is what it's called um, you can find it on my my Ravelry page but it's got these slip stitches is what makes this pattern and it started here and it goes all the way over here and it's gonna get bigger as it increases um, it's been it's been fun but you know I've got other things that I want to work on right now but I will definitely come back to this one um, so 
so there's that. Um, I think that's all of my kind of works in progress right now. The other, I think I've got a couple other ones, but they're just, I haven't even touched them for like months, so it's not even worth getting them out. But I will show you a um, future project that I'm planning on working on for one of my mom's friends, one of her really good friends that they've been friends since high school. And I had made this shawl for, um, for my mom a while ago I can't recall how long ago but it's the um, because I love you wrap by Amy Meeks um, and I used for my mom it was Madeline Tosh merino light and then I think like twisted fiber twisted owl fiber studio I'll look it up I'm sorry um, but it was both single ply with like a purple and then like a, a variegated um, white pink yellow um, and it's it's Got, it starts with like the bulk of one color and then it slowly stripes into the other color and ends with the other color and it's it's like a um I think it's a skewed shawl it's like it's not a try it's not the typical like triangle it's like it's kind of like the one that I'm working on with the frise but anyway so we went to, my parents recently moved to Traverse City, Michigan, um, and of course whenever I go to a city I need to check out their yarn shops and my mom had told me that her friend Lori had come to visit her and wanted to take her I love because I love you wrap because she thought it was so pretty so my mom had this idea that I should make one for her and I said yeah because it was so much fun. Um, and we went to a, um, a yarn shop there, Knit Knitology, I believe. Uh, it's a new shop in Traverse City. It was great. It had so much quality yarn, excuse me, so much quality yarn, good, good, good stock. Um, I had a lot of fun there. The, the gentleman that was running it was super nice, really easy to talk to invited me to a knit um a knit night later that night um so yeah it was really i check it out if you're ever in the area so i said to my mom you know i think we should go how your shawl was made because that's what she really liked about it so me and my mom picked out some yarns together um and originally she just wanted to do a black and white because i guess lori wears a lot of black and white but for me that's really boring to knit and she kind of wanted just like a matte black with just like a basic white and which in Madeline Tosh would still be beautiful um, but I, I know personally I would be neglecting that shawl a lot and it just it wouldn't be something that I want like just want to knit on so we came to a compromise and I actually suggested these two at the very beginning when we were looking through all the Madeline Tosh Merino light and my mom was like, no, no, she won't, she won't like that. She's not, nope, that's too much color. And we actually came back around and my mom was like, what about these two together? And I was like, hmm, yeah, I think that would work, mom. Um, so I got a skein of Cousteau which I have been dying to knit with this colorway um, ever since I, you know, find out about the beauty of Madeline Tosh. The colors aren't really coming out very accurately. It's probably where I'm sitting, I'm sorry. Um, but it's a beautiful blue with some green, a tonal, just, I mean, just glowing, gorgeous. And then we got, I think this is Moon Moonstone. A skein of Moonstone, which is like, I don't think it's really going to show up for you, but it's kind of a very light lavender with some gray, um, light gray, just a very delicate color. And um, so it still has like a deep dark and like a light neutral, almost. For me, this is a neutral. I know it's not for a lot of people, but for me this is definitely a toned down color. So it's going to be those two colors, which are gorgeous together. And then she also, and this was great because I never would have thought of this, so that's, it was really fun bringing my mom um, 
for the edging of the shawl, I'm actually going to use just a black because she wanted to throw some black in there. This is Unicorn Tails. It's the Merino Light Madeline Tosh. Um, it's like a matte black, so it doesn't quite glow like her other colors. Onyx is what it's called. So it doesn't it doesn't have much variegation. Um, I wanted, I think it was called like Jaguar or something, and it was more of a tonal black, but my mom was like, no, I just want just black. So this will be the edging of the shawl. And I would not have thought of using a third color for the edging, because um, the pattern just totally doesn't call for it. But it would be, I think it'll be stunning once it's done. Um, and I'm, I've just been dreaming of working on this, but I know that I have to do my party on my needles before I start this one, or I'm gonna feel like I've, I'm just never gonna finish a project and it would just not motivate me and I'd probably stop knitting for a while. Um, and it, this is being housed in my, um, it's another Molly Klein Designs bag. And this is, I love sushi. Um, so when I saw this come out, I had to get it. It's got cute little sushi characters and some, some edamame and, and I think some dumplings. Um, yeah, it's really cute. And just a pale yellow lining. So it hasn't gotten a whole lot of use yet because it's been housing that yarn. Um, but yes, I am very excited to work on that. Um, let's see. Spinning projects. Okay, so I am still a new spinner. Um, I do a drop spindle. I do not have a wheel. I don't have it in a budget for my wheel. Eventually, I think I would love to get a wheel. I haven't tried a spinning wheel yet. I don't even know how the mechanisms work. I know that there's flyers and stuff. <laughs> I don't, it's all very confusing. I won't even let myself look up, you know, the, the, the terminology because I, I know that I want a wheel and that would just be like dangling a treat in front of my face and me never being able to eat it. So I just won't even look it up. So, long story short, I do drop spindles. I have a couple of them. I have a shocked, shacked, shot one that I got during my first, my first spinning class back in January. Um, and now I have recently joined a spinning and fiber guild in my community. And, um, a lady that I had met there, I was looking at some drop spindles that they had brought with them and, and the lady came up to me and she said, you know, these are great, but I know somebody that makes some really great handmade spindles. If you're interested, um, I can let you know when I see the lady who sells them next. And I said, yeah, of course. And she showed me what she had and I loved it. It was beautiful. Um, she let me kind of spin it for a second and I just liked, I don't know, the torque, the spin. It was, it was just really nice um, so I said yeah and actually later that day she gave me a call and I said of course I'll come meet you and um, I got this bad boy it's made out of cherry I believe um, and it's by a man named I'm gonna butcher it so I'm just yeah it's backwards I will you know try to figure out how to put it right here or show notes or something but he hand makes these um this is a bottom whirl which i wasn't too excited about at first because i had only had a top whirl where like the hook goes right here and you spin it this way whereas this one spins from the bottom and it actually to me feels a little bit smoother than a top whirl um but each each spindle has its time and place um but for now i'm I, this is it's just it like glides as i spin it it's really nice so, um, as soon as I finish spinning my um, Frost Yarns um, fiber bat, I had to immediately put something on. And I've got some fiber in my stash, but nothing that I really wanted um, to use right away. So, I, and at my local yarn shop, um, I had in the back of my mind this really great fiber that she had recently gotten in that I didn't buy right away because I knew that I didn't need it. Um, but I had this in the back of my mind and I was like, I just, I gotta go get it and start spinning it. Um, and it's Fravju fiber again. And I mean, you can see I've already taken out some of it. This is a, sorry for the crinkling. 
This is a 10% um, nylon, I think 30% 30, 30 bamboo and 60% superwash merino, and it's a gradient braid in um, the colorway martini. So it starts from um, a dark green and kind of goes to like a like an emerald. So it starts with like a forest, an emerald, and then it goes to like a grass green, to a Kelly green, to kind of like a lime, and then to like a, a bright, it's definitely got some yellow in it, uh, like a lime and yellow. Lemon lime? I don't know. Um, but it's it's really nice. I really, the smooth, the smoothness I think that's coming from the bamboo, which almost feels like a silk, um, just makes it really pleasant. Um, also, side note, public service announcement, um, bamboo. Don't be bamboozled by bamboo. Um, a lot of times you'll see bamboo, it'll say like 100% bamboo. Um, I believe most of the time the case is that it's not really bamboo. It technically should be called rayon of bamboo because in order to make bamboo spinnable or into a fiber that you can knit with, um, it, they have to like chemically break it down, I believe, and then kind of reconstitute it and like draw it out into these long uh, fine fibers. Um, so it's sort of like the process that tensile is is um, is used. So, and I used to be a huge fan of bamboo because I was like, great, it's sustainable. Um, you know, it's it's good for the environment. It's fast growing. Um, so I was really excited about it, but then I started to do a little bit of research, and it's kind of just reconstituted mush. Um, I don't believe there's a whole lot of chemical off waste. I think they might use like a closed loop system so they kind of keep it all in and like kind of recycle. I'm not positive. Um, I also recently found out from a magazine that I was reading a spinoff. There's three different types of bamboo. There's the Rayana bamboo fast I think and then there was a third type um, but I think most of the time it's Rayana bamboo so it's not Technically, legally, they're supposed to say rayon of bamboo, but they don't. Um, there was a big textile issue um, six or seven years ago, so it's not really bamboo. But, however, clearly, I still can't resist it. Um, I mean, this is just beautiful. I love it. I love spinning it. I love my drop spindle. Um, I can't get enough of it, but I have to kind of pace myself because, you know, with drop spindles, my arms get kind of tired. I wish you guys could see the color better. Um, yeah, and I plan on Navajo plying this, which is also called chain ply, which is a three ply yarn, and it keeps the, the, um, the long colors intact rather than doing like a barber pulling if I were to do just like three singles and then spin them together. Um, so I've been doing some research on Navajo plying and it looks kind of frightening especially for a drop spindle because um, it's like a lot of things that I have to do with my hands but I really like the finished product um, and I think it would just be gorgeous with this because this is a gradient and I want to keep it a gradient. Um, so I'm spinning it on, on that beautiful cherry wood spindle and I think when I apply I will do it on just a top whirl so I don't have to like mess with this part it can just be like this and up um yeah so it'll be a while before I can start chain plying on that um a couple of acquisitions that um aren't really too new for me but I haven't I haven't used them yet and right now I I've, I've also been dreaming about using these um, and, and this was another knit shop in, in Traverse City when I went to see my parents. Um, I can't remember the name of the knit shop. I apologize. Um, but this is by, it's called The Yarns of Richard DeVries, I believe is his name. Um, I'm pretty sure it's also Canadian. Yep, made in Canada. He, I believe he's an indie dyer. Um, and this is his 
uh, 100% merino yarn fingering weight, 225 yards, so it's it's small, and I think it was like $17. So for me, it's it's kind of pricey, but I just I fell in love with the colors, and I had to have it. I'm clearly I'm big on green. I love green. I don't let myself knit with it a whole lot because I don't want it to be the only color that I knit with. Um, so I have to like I I kind of keep the greens for special projects. Um, just as a treat here and there just so m my favorite color can stay special to me and stay as a treat um, so this is called son of Fro son of the frog it's kind of like a beautiful Kelly green just I mean and it's a little bit tonal there's some lighter spots and some darker spots I think it's a two ply yeah it's a two ply um, it's gorgeous. Um, I might make a shawlette, because I got another one in a more speckled, grady, uh, speckled colorway, and this one's called Black Spruce. Oh my god, like, come on. And there's, like, speckles right, right here. I'm gonna have to put, I'm gonna have to insert some photos because this camera just isn't doing this yarn justice right now. But I thought that these would just be gorgeous together. Um, depending on what I end up choosing to make with it, I might add a third yarn just to give it some um, yardage. Like maybe I would, mm, I don't think what I'm spinning right now, I don't think that would, no. Um, but we'll see. I just, I love these. I think they're gorgeous. I'm bummed that they are a smaller, like they're not a full skein, but it's gonna, to me these are really special and I cannot wait to use this. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, in my knitting world, that's what's been going on. Um, I've really been enjoying I've been to two um, guild meetings now with my spinning group, made a couple of um, friends, um, have already been exposed to different tools that I never even knew existed. Like, I, it kind of looks like a drum carter slash blending board, and I guess it was made by Louette in the 70s. A woman brought that in the last meeting that we had um, because we were doing a breed study on um, Lincoln Longwool. Lincoln, I believe, where we got this like kind of like bag of poopy, dirty, um, un unwashed fiber, and the goal is to wash it, you know, start from the beginning and spin it and knit it, um, which to me is a blast because I'm a new spinner and I'm just, I'm crazy about different fibers and feeling it's a very tactile thing and feeling it and, and getting the gist of it um, so at the beginning it was really fun for me washing it pretty much a breeze but then getting to um, calming I believe is what I did um, not as fun as I thought but I'm not using I'm using like dog combs I'm using a couple of tools um, so it's not like the the actual, I mean it works, but I think it would be more enjoyable with better tools. Um, and I, I actually dyed, I don't, I don't have it right next to me, but I dyed some of the locks, I individually washed some locks, and I dyed it with Kool-Aid because I've been wanting to dye fiber and yarn for a while now, and I thought I'd just try the cheapest, safest way first um, on some, it was, it was a very cheap fiber. Um, and that was a lot of fun, and I spun some of that up. Um, you know what? Maybe I will go find it, just so I can show you guys. Half of it I spun up with just the white, um, cleaned, prepped fiber, um, and the other half, the other single, I spun with the Kool-Aid dyed single. Um, and then I did a two-ply. I only made about 90 yards. It's between a fingering and a sport, I would say. So... I mean, I'm pretty proud. It's my first from, you know, fleece to to yarn kind of deal. I personally am not a huge fan of Lincoln at this point. 
Um, I don't know if it's the way I prepped it. We talked about kind of some of our difficulties in the last meeting. Some people love it, some people don't love it. It's definitely, it's coarser. Um, another lady was saying that it's good for outerwear rather than like next to skin. Um, so like a sweater maybe and then like you wear a shirt underneath it. I mean, some people will make scarves and cowls and stuff like that, but I I personally would not. And the amount of work that goes into it, um, I would rather do that amount of work with a fiber that I really enjoy, especially being on a, on a drop spindle. I mean, it takes, I think it takes longer on a drop spindle than it does on a wheel. So you're really being around that fiber a lot longer um, than if it's on a wheel. And then I mean, just having the cart, there were hairs flying and I actually had to wear like a separate outfit because it was like getting embedded in my clothes and it was very itchy and I have allergies. So that might have been part of the problem, but it just was not all around enjoyable, but maybe when I become more experienced at prepping fiber, um, you know, maybe I'll come back to it and be in love with it, but as of right now, I'm not. But it does have a great luster. It has got a great shine. It's beautiful in that regard, um, but other than that, sorry. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much everything that I've got right now. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, hopefully I will stop saying um more um often. Sorry. It's I'm not that great at public speaking. I've actually dropped full grades um in in classes that I've had in the past due to project like projects where I have to do speeches. I'm just not I'm sorry. Um it's part of the reason why I want to do this podcast is so I can feel more comfortable talking for long periods of time in front of an audience, even though it's not really an audience, but anyway, so I haven't come up with a name or anything yet, but as of right now, I'm R-Y-D-E-R-G-1-2-3 on um, Ravelry and Instagram. I'll try to figure out a name for this to see if I to see if I like it. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, a great week, and uh, have fun knitting. Bye!